Hey, what's up? Welcome back to uh, another video. This one is paper 22 of May, June 2022. Of course, this is at math and you can use your calculator, right? That's the good news. Now, with that being said, let's move on to the questions. So here we also have a list of formula that they give you to help you solve the questions. How nice of them, right? <laughs> okay, so now let's move on to question number one. So part one is do not use a calculator. So what it really means is, you know what? You can actually use one. No one is really watching you, right? But the idea is just that you have to show all the steps of your work of how, of how did you reach your answer. So step by step, we have what? A curve have equation y equal to this. So we have y equal to this fraction. Okay, good. Now where x is equal to uh, is equal to or more than zero, it is positive value. Good to know. Now we have to find the exact value of y. Remember, this is the goal of the question. Find the exact value of y when x is equal to six. Okay. Now give your answer in the form of this. Okay. So a, b, and c are integers. Integers are what? Are whole numbers. So let's say if you try to simplify this and your answer was something in decimal, you know it is not right because the answer tell you it is integers. So that's an indication uh, for yourself so that you know you don't make any silly mistakes. Now let's move on. So here we have y. y is equal to this. We have to find the value of y when x is this. So replace x by 6 in the equation. So y will be 6 plus root of 6 over the value of 3 plus root of 6. Okay. Now we have to simplify this. How can we do this? We have to multiply by the conjugate of this one, which is 3 minus root of 6. Now, when you multiply the base by its conjugate, you also have to multiply the top by the same thing. This is because you do not want to change the fraction. So what do I mean? I mean, if you were to simplify, you can take this away, you get back the same thing as you used to have. That's why when you multiply by the base by something, you also have to do the same on the top so you don't change the fraction in itself. Now let's move on. Simplify one by one, so this times this, so you will have what? First take six times this, that will be six times three will be 18, minus six times this will be six, six root six. Okay, now here we have plus root six times this, so yeah, will be plus three root of six, and then minus root of six times root of six will be 6. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So we can always double check using the calculator. Root of 6 times root of 6, that will be 6. Now what else? Uh, for the base, the base will be what? So uh, yeah, you can always do it the same way as we did on top. But if you do, do know the uh, the theorem, which is, uh, as we have seen from what? From uh, O-level, paper 1 or 2, uh, you guys should know that if you have A, plus b times a minus b, it is the same thing as saying a square minus b square. Do we agree? The difference of squares. So same way here, we have a plus b, a minus b. So that will be three square minus root of six square. Right. Now simplify, 18 minus six, that should be the value of what? Of 12. But you can always use your calculator just to be sure, right? 12. And then minus 6 plus 3, that should be uh, minus 3 root of 6. So minus 6 plus 3. And then divide by, uh, this will be 9 minus 6. So finally, if you were to simplify, you will have what? 12 minus 3 root of 6 over the value of 9 minus 6, that should be 3. Simplify, divide by 3 everywhere. You will have 4 minus root of 6. And this is expressed in this form where a is 4, b is minus 1, so we agree it is 1 here. And then c will be just 6, and all these values are integers. So confirm part 1, good to go. Now let's move on to uh, part 2 of your question. So what do we have over here? The diagram shows a graph of y equal to f, so the absolute value of f, the modulus of f, so what it means is that when you have these two bars uh, around your function, 
it means that the function cannot be negative. As you can see, when I draw this line, it doesn't go down. It, it is always up. So when you have these two bars, it means that it is never going to be negative, positive, always on the top. And we also have the graph of y equal to g of x. So this is the line g of x. It is a straight line. Good. Now, where y equal to this, this is our straight lines, okay? Given to you by the question itself. Now we have to solve the inequality, this. So we have to solve this. Now, first thing first, since we have a graph, we can try to solve this using observation, right? Let's see what's going on. I need this f of uh, modulus f of x to be less or equal to than g of x. Okay, you would see on the graph we have modulus, this is here, right? And then here we have g of x. Now where, on which part of this graph can we see that this has to be less than this? So by observation you would see um, yeah, hopefully, uh, you know, you're not blind, <laughs> you can see that between those two points, you agree, when this and this, when they meet, you can see that between those two points, between here and here, we can see that this graph is below this one. So we just have to find these two values to find our answer. So one by one. So let's focus on this value. How can you find this value? It is a point of intersection between this line and this line. So uh, this will suggest us to first find the equation of the line y equal to g of x. So how do you find the equation of a straight line? Pretty easy. We have the two passing points. The point here is 0 minus 1. And the point here is 1, 0. So we're trying to find the equation of g of x. So first, let's find the gradient. That would be, that will be y2 minus y1, so 0 minus minus 1. x2 minus x1, 1 minus 0, that should be plus 1 over 1. The gradient is 1. Now to find the equation, I will use a passing point. This is the x value and the y value. So y minus 0 over x minus its corresponding value is equal to 1. Again, this is just a method that I use to find the equation of the line. I first find the gradient, and then I use a passing point, then I use this formula to find the equation. It is just my method. Now, if you have other preferred method, you can use yours, no big deal. Cross multiply, you will have y equal to x minus 1. So this is the equation of g of x. Good. Now, this is the graph of y equal to f of x. But what we can do is we can treat this line and this line separately, okay? So let me name this line as, mm, let's call this line Z. So let me find the equation of line Z. So how can we do that? Same way, it is a straight line. So we have to use two points and then find the equation. This passing point here is 0, 0,5 and the point here is 2.50. To find the gradient, we use the formula y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1, that will be minus 5 over 2.5, and that should be minus 2. Obviously, you can double check minus 5 divided by 2.5. Here you go. So this will be the uh, gradient of this line z. Now, finally, to find the equation of line z, you would say, let me use a passing point, x value, y value. So y minus 5 over the value of x minus 0 has to be equal to the gradient. Cross multiply, you will have y minus 5 is equal to minus 2. x, obviously x, <laughs> right? And then so y will be 5 minus 2x. This is the equation of line z. Now, since I have this line, I have this line. Let me find this point of intersection. I have two equations here, this equation. This equation I can solve simultaneously. So y is equal to this. Let me put this over here. It should equal to this one, right? So y replace substitution, this. Now let me send all the x to one side, send the x over here. You will and send this one over here. So five plus one will be six. And this will become three x. So x will be just two. So the value of x right here will be two. Okay? Now, uh, what else? What can we do now? So now we have found this. 
we have to find the other point over here right now again the way i'm solving this i just want this to make sense to you does that make sense till now i hope so right now this one right here it is the point of intersection between the line y equal to g of x and this line let's call this line w right i want to treat this equation separately because i can see these are two as two separate lines but of course they are related right okay cool now I, have a, I, have, I call this W. Now, to find the equation of uh, that line, we have to use the points and the gradient. For example, I can see I have a passing point here, which is 2.50. Now, what is the gradient of this line? So, obviously, it will have, we will have to use the relationship of the modulus. For example, we do understand that this is simply so how do you find modulus graph? For example, let's say my equation f of x was something like this. This is f of x, for example, right? Now when I apply modulus, the base, the base right here, it will go, it will reflect up, it will go up, right? So basically, what I mean is that it is a reflection of this one over here. It is the same thing, but in the other direction. So why am I saying this? So the idea is that if the gradient of this one is minus 2, this one will also have to be the same value. But since it is going up, it has to be positive 2. Okay, so we have these values now. We can uh, use that to find the equation of that line. It's x and y. So y minus 0 over x minus 2.5 have to be 2. We have to cross multiply y equal to 2x minus 5. So this is the equation of w. Uh, now from this point on, we can definitely solve again by using substitution, y and y. So on one side, you will have 2x minus 5 is equal to x minus 1. So send all the x to one side, 2x minus x will be x minus 1 plus 5 should be plus 4. So x will be plus the value of 4. So the value here will be 4. So as we can see by observation, we would say the answer will be when x is between or equal the value of 2 and 4, right? So 2 and 4, the value of f, so modulus this, was below that of, of g of x. So this will be your answer for question number 2. Now let's move on to question number three. So we have to find the uh, possible values of k for which this equation has real roots. Okay, so whenever you see that, we have to understand the discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, has to be more or equal to zero. Okay, real roots, we have to think of this right away. Now, uh, how do you find those values? Obviously, we, we do know that if you have a quadratic equation, well, look at this, right? The coefficient of x squared is a, coefficient of, of x will be b, and the last one will be c. So a comparison, we compare. This will be a, this will be b, and the last one will be c. Now replace back in your main equation. So b squared will be k plus 5 squared minus 4 times a, and times c will be minus 4 has to be more equal to zero. Okay, cool. Now we have to uh, simplify, obviously. Uh, that will become k squared plus uh, 10k plus 25. So expand this, we'll give you this, plus 16k. Has to be more equal to zero. So simplify k squared. This will be 26k plus 25, this. Now, uh, something I want to specify is how do you expand something like this? So we have to know. If you have a plus b square, if you want to expand this directly, that will be a square plus 2ab plus b square. So that you guys know how did I get this. So first will be a square will be k square. 2 times ab, 2 times ab will be 10. And then b square will be 25. So this is how I expand this, right? It's not magic. <laughs> it's just a formula. Now, once we have this, we have to find the uh, critical values of, of k, critical values. To find the critical values, we take the same equation, 
right? And then we equate that to zero. Now, how can we solve this? You would say, well, we can use factorization or we can use the, the formula. It's up to you, your preference, uh, which, whichever way you find easier, right? So I will use factorization. K squared is K times K. And 25 is 5 times 5, or it can be 25 times 1, right? I need to have 26 here. That will be plus 1, plus 25 to get 26. So of course, here we have this. So we have to solve K plus 1 has to be 0. And K plus 25 have to be 0. So K have to be minus 1 and K have to be minus 25. This is the critical values of that equation, but it is not your answer yet. Now, I will draw a number line here. I will call this 0 uh, just to help you guys out. And I do know that this is have to be minus 25 and this have to be minus 1 somewhere on the line because minus 25 is obviously less than minus 1, right? Now, because the coefficient here is 1, it is positive, we understand the shape of the graph will be a minimum curve, right? We have to know this by now. If the coefficient is positive, the shape will be something like this. Now, what do we need? We need them to be more than 0. To be this is 0, more than 0. We need up. We need this side and this side. And when is that true? That is true only when k is less or equal to minus 25 or when k is more or equal to minus 1. Only here and here that will be true. That will satisfy my equation. So this will be your answer for question number 3. I hope the first half of the video was somewhat helpful. If you guys would love to access the full video, feel free to click on the Patreon link on the main page. Otherwise, you can go to the description below and click on this link to access the Patreon page for the full video. With that being said, good luck and thank you for watching.